the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. If you're coming to Winnipeg, you're looking for an Airbnb. <laughs> an apartment in St. B is going to be what you're looking for. If I'm you're telling you. I'm telling you. I was just telling you. Well, <laughs> off air, I was telling the guys that like, like if I was an Airbnb host, I would have a high rating. Here's the deal. I stayed in my first Airbnb ever when uh, I went out to British Columbia. Mm. Okay? It was a house. Fantastic. The couple seemed very nice. They had a couple of doors that are locked because they have... uh, You almost have to be a minimalist when you are an Airbnb uh, renter. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't want your stuff touched, right? And they they ask their certain rules. So as soon as you said you having an Airbnb, I said, there's no way. You have two bedrooms. One of them is your makeup room and your clothing room, yeah. like your closet. So, okay, you're going to lock that door. Then you have your just your bedroom available. <laughs> and then the couch, basically, with the TV and all the sayings on the wall. And a 32-inch <laughs> Sanyo. And a 32-inch no. flat screen. Sanyo, not even I a smart have TV. I a 65-inch now. Wow. That's yes, a step you did. Up. You got that in the divorce, I believe. No. Uh, did that you was, pick I, that, that up? was after the breakup, and then I bought it. Okay. And then it's like, and you got a functioning toilet because you just uh, put it that, just got fixed. Put that in the specs. Functioning <laughs> toilet. And I have eucalyptus hanging in the shower. Okay, yeah, it's oh, a yes. spa experience. That's big. So that's big. For <laughs> you really, really want to turn your place into an Airbnb? No, I'm just saying, if I could, you know, if I had to, there's a lot I could offer. Oh, the views on to no. What you actually said off B. there was you would get like a super rating. Super rating. Yeah, because I'm a good host. Yeah, I like yeah. to host people. Well, but you won't be there. Yeah, you're not. It's an Airbnb. Sometimes the Airbnb hosts are there. What? Like, yes, you, when you book an Airbnb, you can... Must be like cut rate. You, you, <laughs> I would not do... Who's hey, doing that? You know what? I'd love it if you stay in your <laughs> yeah. own house while you're I'm the, here. You're in the other room. I can, I've never heard of this. Yes, it's a shared no, accommodation. No, I believe you because I've only done it once, so I can't debate this. And I just booked an Airbnb for Nashville. So. Shared, shared accommodation would be a big joint, though, wouldn't it? Not a... Like that's a bed and breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> that they live in. That's not an Airbnb. No, and two the, bedroom apartment, <laughs> shared accommodations. <laughs> like there are I'm people lonely. that will couch stay? surf on Airbnb because they're just oh. passing through, and maybe they just yes. need a quick night at somebody's place or yes. whatever. They don't right. need the whole house. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I've you know, heard some that. people will rent a room. But you're talking about hosting. That poor bastard just <laughs> wants no to way. lay down for a couple of hours. I'm gonna go you're going to talk his ear off. <laughs> <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Uh, pissed off? Well, then get the f*** off Twitter and call the bone phone. Don't make me look up from my phone. 780-BONE. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. You know what I like about our bone phone callers? Uh, It's not always a specific complaint, an issue. Sometimes it's just, hey, I'm in town and here's how my day went. Big N. Hey, guys. Well, uh, we made her to the city. I am sitting on St. Mary's and Vaughn at the Winnipeg Clinic Vision Care Center. My mother-in-law and my wife are inside, and I am sitting in the vehicle with my hazards on. But there is a sign here that says temporary parking, and apparently everybody does it, so I think I'm in the wrong. Nerves are a little frazzled. Seen a pretty big accident on the way in this morning at... Eli sent me in an SUV. I don't know. They said SARS was there, so I'm assuming it's pretty serious. That held us up for a while. And then we got through Headingley into the edge of the city, and lo and behold, TransCanada's all tore up down the one lane, and that made us even later. But once I got in on Portage Avenue, my inner city person came out, and I was driving like Mario Andretti. Man, this, this town makes me nervous. Anyways, uh, sitting here, a lot of interesting uh, characters. Wandering around. But anyways, Mater should be able to make it out. We're gonna stop and get some red lobster before we leave. Ah. Everyone have a great day, great week. Rock on, big and out. Okay. You know that reminds me of when I used to go to the big city of Edmonton. Yep. You know, when you grow up in a in a smaller community and you make it to the city for the day, it's like you got to take advantage. You know, you you go to stores that you don't have, and you mm-hmm. go to restaurants, and you get the things that you want, and yeah, it, it's frazzling sometimes coming into the big city. 
That's the one thing that surprised me. Big N didn't go shopping somewhere because you're right. Anybody that comes in from out of town, you make a day of it. And I'll tell you what, he must love his mother-in-law because uh, <laughs> he brought her into the city, went to the appointment, uh, but he acclimated himself right away. The uh, hazards in a temporary mm, parking zone key. to wow. save a few dollars from parking. And you know what? Spent it at Red Lobster. Left oh, a little money. The man's got a belly full of cheese biscuits this morning, so he's uh, doing well. The only one left in town. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is a more serious call. We get calls like this every now and then, and I think it's important to play them want to express my uh, gratitude and my appreciation for everyone there at the uh, 921 City. And I also want to say thank you to all the phone phone regulars, uh, Manny, Banker, Guilty, uh, Chi, Kona, Lisa, uh, I know I'm missing a few, I can't uh, remember the, the uh, rest of you folks all the time, but yeah, you guys all uh, helped me get through a really difficult time. Eventually, in the past couple of years, a couple of years ago, one of my buddies passed away with an overdose, and I uh, wasn't doing very well. Uh, eventually, it was a tough couple of years for me, and uh, yeah, but thank you to all you guys, you know. Being able to listen to the phone phone every day, uh, it uh, made me laugh, it helped me cope, it helped me Thank you so much. I'm feeling very uh, grateful. Mm. Great to hear. Good story. <laughs> you know, not the old overdose part, obviously, but the part about mm -hmm. uh, how the bone phone is therapy for some people. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we've always said it was, but mm. we thought it meant for the people calling to vent. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. We, this call is getting more and more common on the bone phone. Complaints about uh, delivery drivers and how they park. Hello. How are you? This is your average dick here. Uh, skip the brain, uh, uber stupid. Uh, wake up and smell the toast and learn how to park. There is a parking lane, even though you're facing the wrong way. It's always better than blocking the road. Wake up and smell the toast, you a-holes. Anyway, have yourself a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Ciao. Good piece of toast smells good in the morning. And then you hear it being buttered. You're like, hmm, I want some toast. Well, unless you're smelling it. And remember, yes. like, stroke? you're supposed no. to, yeah, it's a is sign of is? having a stroke or something. Like. No, I don't think it's burnt toast, isn't it? Burnt, burnt hair or something? Is it burnt hair? I Could think it's be. burnt toast. Could be burnt toast. toast is in the mix there, yeah. So Burnt hair. Burnt. <laughs> yes. I I that is a it. terrible smell, though, burnt yes. hair. Oof. I remember on Sopranos when Carmine was having a stroke at, they were at the golf course, and he said he, I'm positive, he said he smelled burnt hair. So yeah. it's probably burnt toast and burnt hair, maybe. Someone, someone Something will, is burning. Someone <laughs> will help us out. Uh, I believe this guy, he's adopted the moniker Cliff Clavin around here. He knows a little bit about everything, cycling, like you name it, comic books. Well-rounded. <clears throat> yep. He wants to talk about the poo test, which came up yesterday. You turn 50 and you're a uh, guy. You get the poo test in the mail. Hey, guys. Yeah, that, uh, that poo stick test. <laughs> uh, that's no joke, man. You want to get that done as soon as possible if you're on the, if you're on the HD. Get that done. Because a friend of mine uh, did it, and uh, there was issues with it. So they did a colonoscopy, mm -hmm. and they found uh, two cancerous polyps. Oh, man. Um, they were early enough on that they were able to just remove the polyps and be done with it. But, you know, if you would have just waited a little bit longer, it would be a completely different conversation with the doctor. Yeah. So don't, don't delay in having these. You know, get them done as soon as you can. Yeah, ha ha. We had a lot of fun with it yesterday because Joe's already done a couple. I got my first one from my doctor, and you know, like, but but it is serious. Men's health, yeah, like, we don't do... absolutely. Like, obviously, I laugh, but like, I didn't give you guys a hard time that you have to go through that. But it's the same for women. Like, we got to go through certain exams, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure women also have to go through, uh, like, for uh, this as well, colonoscopies and stuff like that. Yeah, you'll get yeah. the poop test at 50 as well. But I yes, have a lot to look forward to. It's about early detection, and uh, I, I honestly believe the good thing about it too is for people that need to go right to colonoscopy, it uh, it helps the lines hmm. because we're doing the other test 
Yeah, this to is see. Uh, to see if there's a need yes. for a colonoscopy. So you're saying women get this done too? I was thinking men's help, but women get the fifth at fifty yes. get the test too. Okay, I apologize. I, um, I the realize. prep involved sucks for colonoscopy, from what I've heard. Oh yeah, I've had it done before. You got to drink that big yeah. jug of uh, Phil liked it. I, I enjoy, well, I don't enjoy the prep. The actual no. colonoscopy is not so bad. It really they put you right out. And what the hell? Doctor's very nice. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's the bone phone. <laughs> <laughs> The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Uh, on the Boston Pizza text line this morning, someone wants to know, is my daughter crazy? I saw her making a snack last night. Cucumber salt vinegar. Sounds good so far. But then she had minced garlic and soya sauce. Mixed it all together and voila. Y- uh, yuck, I thought. Any listener here uh, of such a thing. That, that doesn't sound that bad. Like, uh, what yeah. was on it? Can you backtrack a bit? Okay, there? let's go. You got cucumbers, salt, vinegar. Like, I, yeah, I yeah. put cucumbers that's in. That's like a salad. Yeah, that's normal. And then minced garlic. Again, I'm not grossed out yet. And then soy sauce. Nah, none of that grosses me out as far as cucumbers go. Maybe soy sauce for me, but I'm pretty picky. I actually tried this recipe because it's a viral TikTok thing right now mm. that's going on with cucumbers. Okay. And uh, it's, it's so good. So, like, I'm telling you right now. A lot of salt. Is, a lot of salt in there. A, a lot of cucumbers being sold these days. Mm-hmm. And basically, they just, like, cut them up and into a jar, and you put a bunch of ingredients. And there's different recipes going around. This one's, like, the, the big one, though, mm-hmm. where it's just, like, vinegar and, and your garlic and soy sauce. And you shake it up, and then you just eat the cucumbers uh-huh. that are marinated in it. It's really good. Yeah, oh. cucumber is a good vegetable. I mean, I got no problem with cucumbers. Refreshing in the summer. Absolutely. I mean, you put them on a plate as far as, like, you won't meet too many people who, you know, I don't like cucumbers. True. And there's a lot True. you can do with them. I'll put cucumbers on a sandwich. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. water. Have you ever had it in water? I've been to a... a they are water. A, no, yeah, but in a place they've had the water dispenser and they had oh, cucumber yeah. in there oh, when you yeah. and you can taste it in the water. It tastes mm-hmm. very Thermia good. has that. Very good. Okay. The fancy waters. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm totally okay with that. And vinegar, my parents used to do that. Just put a bunch of cucumbers in a bowl yeah. of vinegar on the table with some with salt and pepper in there. onions in there, too. They didn't have onions oh, in there. Oh, I they, love raw onions Yeah. In, yeah. in a cucumber vinegar salad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cucumbers are good. I'm okay with that. So, no, I don't think this rest, like, I, I don't think that's crazy at all, what, what they're asking us on the text line. No, I've definitely seen people eat weirder <laughs> things. Someone's saying, so you're basically making lazy pickles with soy sauce. Basically, yeah, you're like, yeah. instead of pickling, mm-hmm. you're just eating it right away. And then throwing soy sauce in there. I also love pickles. The evolution of, you can buy a jar of spicy pickles now. Oh, anything pickled is so yeah. good. Now, are, are cucumbers ready to be uh, given out, you know, like anybody with a garden? I know tomatoes are starting to make their way in green beans because Pops has been throwing out the green beans already, but I haven't heard anything about cucumbers because yeah. it's that time of year. My youngest has a garden. He yeah, really how's it coming? It. One of his teachers got him onto it a couple of years ago. Cucumbers are coming through the back door, man. He loves it and he eats yeah. them. Like, he eats them uh, like he'd eat an apple. Like yes. He doesn't cut them up. He yeah. walks around the house eating one of his cucumbers wow. that he grew in his garden. Does he put a little salt? you got to no. have a little salt. No really, salt. Eh? He just eats them. Good for him. Yeah. I'm just saying, I will gladly take any, anything. You want yeah. Oh, my God, yes. He's got cherry tomatoes, too. His oh, yeah. Like, and oh. Joe, tell your dad that I want some green beans. Ice cream Well, pan. now that he hears you're looking at an Airbnb, <laughs> he's going to try and help you out as much <laughs> Joe, as he can, my dad. <laughs> Kirby's house, if you missed it, our no. apartment. One bedroom. <laughs> One bedroom, functioning a toilet. Couch. Couch is couch, available. TV and a functioning toilet. And one hell of a host. And she'll be there. She doesn't bore you. She stays there and she talks to you. So. This, this is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. On the phone with Chris Jericho, before we get into why we're talking to you, Chris, I, I just got to say, like, anytime we need to chat with you or, or, you know, you're in town, you always make time for us, so... You know, thank you very much, man. Well, thank you, man. Thank you guys for always having me on. It's always good to be uh, to be back uh, in the peg. You know, it's funny because you grew up listening to this station like uh, like most of us, so it's always good to have you back here. But let me ask you this: You're the busiest guy I know in showbiz. If you're not uh, if you're not performing in a ring or behind a microphone or singing on a stage now. You've been acting as well, but now you decided to become an executive producer 
of something right here that means something to you wrestling-wise? Well, yeah, obviously we have the Death Tour, uh, the documentary um, that we debuted a, a few months ago in Slam Dance in, uh, in Salt Lake City, and now we're doing a Canadian run in the theaters. And you know about the Death Tour, Joe, yep. and know kind of what it's all about. If you're, if you're in wrestling in, in Canada, uh, specifically in Western Canada, but also all across the country, you've heard of the Death Tour. Now, this is Tony Candelo, our very own Tony Candelo, has been doing this for gosh, 30 years plus of doing these these tours to the remote areas of Manitoba up into the, the First Nation communities, indigenous communities. And it's called the Death Tour because it's one of the most grueling tours you could ever do. Uh, just getting up to some of these areas, traveling across the frozen lakes, and, and you know, you're talking 15-hour drives and that sort of a thing. And when you get up to these places you have to set up the ring and you wrestle then you take your sleeping bag out then you sleep on the floor of the gymnasium and it's just a, a very much an a, a urban legend uh, amongst wrestling uh, especially if you know anything about wrestling in Manitoba and um, when they said they wanted to do, do a documentary about it and asked me to help them make it I was all for it what I didn't know is just what we were going to get which is so much more than just a wrestling documentary yeah, I was talking to Kirby and Phil about this off the air, and uh, Kirby especially, I mean, you really, really get a feel in this documentary about how isolated northern Manitoba really is and, and how entertainment for these people have probably kept some of these people alive and given them hope on, uh, on, on things they can do outside of living in that area. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because... We look back on it, and you talk about, you know, Jericho and Kenny Omega and Luther and Don Callis and Edge and Christian and Rhino, and, you know, the, the list goes on and on of, of, you know, very famous wrestlers that have, that have started doing these tours. And for us, and for the, for the wrestlers that do them now, it gives you a chance to, to work regularly, and, and, you know, you're working 10, 12 days out of 14 days, um, but it gives you a chance to really taste what it's like to be, you know, a quote unquote famous pro wrestler. Because when you go up to these communities, like you mentioned, it's not like there's a lot of different types of entertainment going to, you know, Pegasus or Blood Vein right. or these types of places. So when, when you go into the town, you are the superstar. Conversely, when the wrestling comes to these, 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 these towns, these little, these little villages, they get a chance to, to to have something to look forward to, and to them it's 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 WrestleMania. It's all in. It's a chance yeah. to to have a big time event coming to their community. So it really works both ways, and I think we've really captured that just how much it means for both the wrestlers in the ring and the people watching the shows outside of the ring. Just how important it is uh, to, to everybody involved that these tours exist and continue to, to happen every year. Kirby, you would love it because these female wrestlers that are in this, you should see the little kids that run up to these, these, uh, female wrestlers and are calling them heroes. And I love them and everything else. Like there's a lot of love in the air when, when these, uh, future stars, show up at these uh, school gymnasiums. It's this, crazy. This documentary really has it all. Like, a lot of fun scenes, and, like, it ha- touches on that emotion as well, and, and obviously, like, the history behind the, the tour. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I mentioned, when, when I got involved, you could do, you know, a 90-minute documentary just on the ridiculous stories that happen uh, on these tours, going up there and, and all the stuff that happens, the shenanigans that go on while you're doing them. But it became so much more than that. Like I said, there is moments... Of, 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 of hilarity and, and just the ridiculousness of, you know, vans almost going through the ice and, yeah. and, you know, getting stopped for hours because, you know, there's a semi that, that, that clogs the one way in and out of these communities. So you have to wait until they're able to take, you know, the ice plow to pull it out. But there's, there, there's, there's more than that with just how much, like I said, how much these tours mean to the kids up there. And, you know, some of the wrestlers documented are Indigenous as well. They, they kind of become, like Joe said, ipso facto heroes to these kids. And so, listen, some, some of the wrestlers on this, on this documentary might never wrestle again. And some of them might go on to, to headline, you know, huge shows in Madison Square Garden. But it doesn't matter because on this tour, you are everything that you envisioned yourself being when you stepped into wrestling. And 
the same thing with the kids and the communities watching. This is the top of the top of the entertainment that they'll get throughout the course of the year, and it means something. And it means something to, to, to Tony Kandel. I mean, Tony's in his mid-80s now, and this is something that keeps him going are these tours and just how much of a how much of responsibility he takes to, to make sure these tours do well and, and the responsibility he has to the tribal chiefs up in the northern communities of delivering something very quality. So it's one of those things, like I've made a few documentaries before, and when you do a documentary, you don't do it for the fans of the actual you know, uh, of the actual subject. Like, like I said, wrestling fans will love this. This is more than just a wrestling documentary. This is a documentary about Canada, a documentary right. about Manitoba, a documentary about the culture, the, the multicultures that our country has. And that's something that, that we kind of found as we were making this movie and really focused in on. So I was really happy with how it turned out of being so much more than just what I originally thought it was going to be. On the phone with the great Chris Jericho. And Chris, we understand you're in town on Thursday for a Q&A and a screening? Yeah, I think it's a, a, the Dave Barber uh, Cinematique. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm sure it had many names over the years. But, um, but yeah, th this is screening across Canada right now. They had a run in Toronto, and then they went to, I believe, Calgary and Edmonton. And, and this week they're, they're, they're showing it in, in Winnipeg. And um, it's been up for a, a couple of days, and I think it started last week, but the 15th is, is the day that I can swing by. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of it. It was great uh, watching it in Salt Lake City, Park, Park City, should I say, at that huge festival slam dance. And now getting a chance to see it in, in my hometown and kind of where the death tour was birthed. It's going to be very special indeed. So, yeah, that's going to be on Thursday. I'm going to be up there. Um, I believe it starts at 9 o'clock, and like you said, we're going to do a Q&A and meet everybody and watch the movie together. It's going to be a, a fun time for sure. Yeah, there's one other showing on the 18th, but if you want to uh, see Chris and be a part of that Q&A, Dave Barber Cinematech, and that's coming up on Thursday. One last question for you, Chris. I know you like to dabble in different business things, but any thoughts maybe of doing... Uh, a couple of more of these documentaries that might lean in through the wrestling uh, scope, sort of like uh, your Stampede run with maybe the Heart Dungeon, maybe something out of BC or, or Quebec with the old Canadian heritage of wrestling, something else you could maybe dabble into? Does this open the door Actually, for that? I took, took it more on a worldwide base. Uh, last December I went to Vietnam um, and, and doing a documentary on pro wrestling in Vietnam, which is like so strange to think of but i was contacted by a group out there who had basically started it up and and i thought what a way to bridge the the cultural gap between the west and the east of, besides pro wrestling like what a yeah. what an interesting way to to kind of you know c connect these two worlds so to speak so yeah i went there and uh we got hours and hours of tremendous footage and we're actually editing it right now oh cool uh to put together this documentary we're going to call it Viet slam and um, so, yeah, once we get that all edited and ready to go, then you start taking it on the film festival circuits and, and do it all over again. So, yeah, this will be the fourth documentary that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've done. And um, they're always interesting to do. And I, I like doing the documentaries like we did with the Death Tour and with Viet Slam um, in that you don't know what you're going to get. If we do a documentary on, you know, Bobby Hull, we know what to get. He's got the story. He, he, he grew up. He lived. He passed away. He had this great career. When you're doing a documentary like Death to or the Slam, you go to these places with a camera, and it unfolds in front of your eyes, and you never know what you're going to do and what's, what's going to happen. So it's very exciting to make these, these things, and it's very exciting to add them and put them together, and even more exciting when they're actually in the theater uh, where you can go watch them and, and enjoy them with other people. So that's kind of the best part of, of, of it, for sure. Chris right Jericho, yeah, man. Can't wait to see this powerful documentary, The Death Tour. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I no, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for helping out. We'll see you guys on Thursday uh, in Winnipeg. I'm excited. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. All right, very special birthday wish that came in on the Boston Pizza text line. It says, uh, Morning PJK, could you please send out a happy birthday to Tammy J, a.k.a. Hammer. Hammer. It's her 50th birthday today. Tam the Ham. Tammy J, a.k.a. the Hammer. She's a lifelong Transcona resident, loves PJK to get her day started. First thing she does when she opens the shop, she wants to hear a banger.
Okay, you don't just going to say, and she can comment, but you don't short when your nickname is the hammer, you don't shorten it to ham. And I love ham. No. But you get someone calls you hammer. That's a great nickname. You don't want that short. No. Okay, fair it's enough. Tammy J, aka Hammer. Thanks in advance from Sean. So happy birthday to Tammy J, aka the hammer. Yes. I want to know when we're going to the spike. With Tammy, the yeah, hammer. Yeah, she's from Transcom. Well, she's Good. the hammer. She decides. Also, you're going to get the poop test in the mail, uh, Tammy. Hammer, so enjoy that. That's from <laughs> Phil Aubrey. <laughs> what? Instead of a card. <laughs> this yes, is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Tammy the hammer this morning. Happy 50th birthday. Right on. I don't know if Sean was expecting it to go down like it did, but... With the poop test? <laughs> either way. Well, with, with Kirby... Tammy uh, J's birthday. Calling her ham, and then... Well, I just went with Tam, and so we, I just, you know, you know... And then we just decided, no, it should be Hammer. She yeah. hasn't gotten back to us yet. If she, you know, wants to have uh, it shortened to Ham or not, we think probably not. And then I said, hey, enjoy your poop test. Because we get lots of text messages about that since I referenced it yesterday. Once mm-hmm. you turn 50... You get the the popsicle stick and the envelope in the mail. It's a it's a rite of passage at fifty years old. And I didn't old. know that. Mm. Well, so neither did I. My buddies are all talking about it. Well, though, you we get, all turned fifty. I don't remember the. I, if I do believe it comes with three popsicle sticks, some paper, three. and three little closed boxes. Does it not? And you have to. I don't know. I haven't checked the mail. Yeah, in a I while. think you got to do what about is it, like, three tests. By numbers? <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. You have to stay between the lines. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Like, what kind of prep are you involving? Because, like, you, you got to have, like... Well, eat some fiber. Well, without being too descriptive, you got to have a solid sample, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah, you don't <laughs> want to sample... <laughs> a, you don't want to have 14 beer and do that, like, hot wings and do that. I'm thinking. I don't know. The, the doctor well, didn't specify. Yeah, like, yeah. He didn't say what I can and can't That's eat. not going to help. That's not going to help your cause, anyway, in trying to do this uh, art project. Anyway, Tammy, enjoy it's your everywhere. day. It's <laughs> everywhere. Philly, Joe, Kirby. Philly, Joe, and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly, Joe, and Kirby Podcast. Philly, Joe, and Kirby's completely useless question. Useless with a capital Y. Oh, so useless. Brought to you by Midtown Ford. 92 One City, the home of the Bird Block Party, and we've got tickets up for grabs right now to see. It's 92 One City night. Headstone's the headliner. You got I Mother Earth and Sloan. Kirby might actually know the answer to this. A survey found that the worst thing a guy can do for his dating profile picture is. <laughs> a survey found, sorry. Sorry, a survey found that the worst thing a guy can do for his dating profile is it's not his picture. Sorry, so it's just, so the, just worst the, the, profile the profile in general. Yes. Okay. Might involve the picture, but gotcha. Seven eighty city seven eighty twenty four eighty four. Good morning. Hi, can I get a light one, Kirby? Sure can, Kirby. Go ahead. Well, I mean, my first thing that came to mind is uh, post to photos where the X is cut out. Oh, good answer, but no. No, that's not in the top five. Those were always my favorite. Where you can, some people even use their wedding photos. That's always nice, you know. Really? People do that, eh? And they yep. cut their... I'm telling you. And they cut the bride oh. right out of the photo. Wow. Wearing a nice suit, I no guess. No other photos. <laughs> Can't. Don't have another photo. I've got to use the wedding. <laughs> we have a few photos in my album. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, hello, city. Uh, let's go with Kirby again. Kirbs. See, once you said she'll know it. She, people I thought, are just going to uh, lifeline her to death here. Uh, well, I think I'm the only person in this room that's been on dating apps. That's a good point. Yes. Um... Yes. Uh, well, if it was here, Manitoba, it'd be about fish and pictures of fish, but I'm not going to guess that. I'm going to say they don't include their height. No. Not no, the height. nothing to do with the height. Thanks, Kirk. No, no problem, man. Have a good one. Survey found that the worst thing a guy could do for his dating profile is... 780 City. Mind you, you might know the answer, too, because... Uh, I make a lot of bad decisions. You make a lot of yeah. bad decisions, <laughs> and uh, if you had to put up your own profile... That would be bad. Yeah, you would uh, do it without getting help first, <laughs> and then there'd be a lot of editing after. So you might know the answer, too. 
<laughs> For Bert Block Party tickets, go ahead with your guess. Is it uh, shirtless pictures? That's number two. Ah, six of <laughs> being bare chested. Yeah. Just the thought of Philly having to create a dating profile is so it funny. Uh, would like, be on point. Okay, it'd be you would straight need a fire. lot of help Did if you hear Stacey him? ever loved you. Did you hear him though? The guess was, you know, taking your shirt off. And Phil goes, ah, see, he would have done that. <laughs> um, drink it up. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Kirby. Can you help me out again? Okay, I'm going to say <laughs> they, oh, can I just hear the question? I need to spark my Sure. A survey found that the worst thing a guy can do for his dating profile is be in a relationship. No, but I will say talk about past relationships on his profile. Okay, okay. so we'll give you that one, but that's okay. not number one. Thanks for playing. So you don't want any talk of a past relationship, and you don't want bare-chested pictures so far. I still can't understand that one. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> good morning, City. Good morning. Hey. I'm going to go against what Kirby said, and I think it is posting a picture of a fish. A fish. No, no, nothing no. to do with fish. It nope. shows you're an outdoors person, yes. right? Like, hey. Uh, yeah, there's no shortage of those photos in this. Hey, in Manitoba, I mean, Manitobans, we love our fish. Yeah. Like yeah. seriously, high city. Uh, I'm gonna guess it is uh, flexing on a car. No, but pics of your vehicle is a no-no. That was yes. number five. Uh, you're right there. So uh, you, if you were bare-chested, flexing on your car, like this gentleman was suggesting. You're really in big trouble on your Phil, profile. The key is to take it to a parking lot. With the car. And that's the best. But away from most of the other vehicles, just get you and your vehicle in the shot. So shirtless on the hood of that's the car? That's well, I'm just saying. You got well, a good white, shot. Well, white snake video now. And your Trans Am. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, City. Hey, guys. Uh, sunglasses. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Survey found that the worst thing a guy can do for his dating profile is actually be wearing sunglasses. Yes. Hmm. Women want to see the face, the eyes, the I eyes. guess. You All want right. the rest of this? Yeah, let's go, Joe. So uh, bare chested. Okay. Was not, I know. I know. It's a stunner. I know. Yeah. I know. What if you're at the beach? Yeah. Like, hey. Uh, next to your car. Right next to Talking the... about an ex. <laughs> With free weights in the background. Wearing your sunglasses. You're in big trouble. Uh, the other one was spell check. Like, uh, oh, watch yes. your spelling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This, this is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. By the way, we've heard back from the hammer. Tammy, who's celebrating a 50th birthday today. Kirby, Kirby called her ham, and I said, I don't think so. Uh, she did not reference that whole, you know, can we call her ham? So I guess we'll stick with hammer. She did say, thanks so much for the awesome shout out for my 50th. Uh, from from my man Sean went to Murdoch McKay as well Philly no spike tonight Kirby had an amazing party on Saturday you guys always make my mornings love you guys I didn't get the invite so sorry no and you can tell she was being nice by just saying it's hammer yeah there's no ham yeah there's well I mean, you're, not, you're not getting an invite to the 51st Tam the <laughs> ham, ham. Like, what the hell I is just, that it just came out sometimes my my speak before my brain works you're 50 years old. You, you've got the nickname Hammer, which is one of those nicknames everybody would want. Like right there with Chainsaw, Mad Dog, like that's a good nickname, Hammer. And Kirby goes and says, Tam the Ham, as if that's, we're going to suddenly yeah. change it. No way. I just, honestly, I would love to know how she got that because I'm going to be honest, the only time I've ever heard somebody use that nickname is uh for a guy yeah yeah mm -hmm. like dave the hammer schultz yeah one of the <laughs> toughest guys to ever play the game and I, it's usually because they've got a big hammer well in doubt yeah <laughs> yeah well, i don't know if he did i did a hockey dinner with him and that didn't come up in the q a i think he was called the hammer because every time he hit somebody it felt like a hammer Kirby. you should have asked him you <laughs> should have asked him <laughs> But, uh, Hammer. He was a big. He was a big fighter so in his how day. How big is that thing? I did actually. Oh, I actually I'm did the sorry. dinner with them in. Uh, wow. <laughs> Don't wow me. Okay. Um, hey, yeah. speaking of nicknames, how about like you guys got to give me some cred over here? One of our technical guys out oh, of, boy. I guess Toronto. Yeah. His last name is Noon. 
And you know I have a bad a track record with a big mucky mucks out of Toronto here with the company ever since I accidentally stole that lady's bagel uh, at a, we mm. were there for business in Toronto. We haven't been invited back by the way. Not yet. No, because of the bagel incident where I thought it was a, you know, food, public food. And I took the bagel and she's like, that was mine. I'm sorry. And then you also responded to oh, yeah. a company wide email, a reply all about the Christmas party. So I've yeah. made my share of mistakes <laughs> company wide. This guy, though, he's helping us out with something technical around here uh, in Winnipeg at 92.1 City. And his, his last name is uh, Noon, N-O-O-N, like the time, time of day, Noon. Mm-hmm. So I said to him, he's, he's doing a lot of work for me this morning, helping me out, get me set up. So I said, hey, do you mind if I call you Nooner? First I said, thanks, Nooner. And then I said, can I call you Nooner? And he replies, absolutely, that's my hockey nickname. Yeah. That was an easy one. You but didn't. I'll tell you right now, no <laughs> one is going from Tammy J. Hammer to Tam the Ham. For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 921 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.